In 1952, a military confrontation between the Swedish Air Force and the Soviet Union took place over the Baltic Sea. Sweden was officially neutral during the Cold War, but secretly signed an agreement with Great Britain and the U.S. in 1949. Sweden was to provide them with signals intelligence data, in exchange for American technology. The Swedish Air Force used specially equipped TP-79 DC-3 transports, for top-secret flights over the Baltic Sea. These DC-3s used American signals intelligence equipment. The Swedish Air Force also conducted photo reconnaissance missions over the Soviet Union. In 1948, a Swedish S-26 Mustang intentionally entered Soviet airspace. The Mustang was equipped with a camera on loan from the U.S. Air Force. More flights like this was conducted by an S-31 Spitfire, during 1949. The main objective of these flights, was to investigate the air defenses of the Soviet Union. The Soviet ability to counter American nuclear-capable Boeing B-47 Stratojets, was of particular concern. In 1951 the Soviet Union discovered the Swedish flights, and Sweden was forced to make a diplomatic apology. However, the flights continued. The Soviet Union accused Sweden of running errands for NATO. They also warned Sweden that NATO signals intelligence aircraft had been shot down in 1950. On June 13, 1952, the Swedish TP-79 DC-3 Hugen conducted a mission over the Baltic Sea. At the time, the Soviet Union was conducting a major naval exercise in the Baltic Sea. Officially the Swedish DC-3 was on a navigational exercise. In reality the mission was another. The DC-3 was on a signals intelligence gathering mission. The DC-3 reported its position at 11.08 am. At 11.23 there was a radio call from the navigator. The message was interrupted. This was the last time anyone heard from the crew of the DC-3. The military suspected the aircraft had been shot down, but this was kept secret from the public. On June 16, two TP-47 Catalina Sea Rescue aircraft were sent to search for the DC-3. While searching, one of the Catalinas was attacked by a Soviet MiG-15 fighter. The Catalina was damaged and had to make an emergency landing. The crew survived, and was rescued by the West German freighter, Minsterland. Days later, the Swedish military recovered a damaged lifeboat from the DC-3. The lifeboat was damaged by shrapnel, that originated from MiG-15 cannon rounds. Years later, in 1956, the Swedish Prime Minister, Taga Erlander, met Soviet leader, Nikita Khrushchev. Khrushchev admitted to Erlander that a Soviet MiG-15 had indeed shot down the TP-79. The Swedish government did not let the public or the relatives of the DC-3 crew learn what had happened. In 1991, Russian Premier Boris Yeltsin admitted publicly that the DC-3 had been shot down. He also revealed that the DC-3 was over international waters, when it was shot down. In 2003 Swedish diver, and former Air Force pilot Anders Yalai, located the wreck of the DC-3. The DC-3 was found at a depth of 125 meters, 55 kilometers east of Swedish island Foro, in international waters. Yalai obtained a classified document, that showed that the DC-3 had been close to a Sverdlov cruiser when it was shot down. In 2004, the wreckage of the DC-3 was salvaged from the bottom of the ocean. The remains of four of the eight crew members were recovered. However, Four signals intelligence specialists have never been found. It is believed that they were killed when the Catalina was shot down, however there have been rumors of four Scandinavian prisoners in a gulag camp. The recovered DC-3 is now exhibited at the Swedish Air Force Museum in Linköping.